Welcome back to Movie Flicks and Cinema Picks. I'm Davy, your host with the most, the beast with the least. The least we can do today is celebrate the new release. It's been out on the festival circuit for a while, but the new release to Blurry of Mark Cousins, the story of film, A New Generation. Not to be confused with Star Trek The Next Generation. Um, Mark and I, even though he doesn't know it, go back a long way. Um, this is the story of film. Well, my story of film, um, growing up as a teenager, um, late 90s and whatnot, um, Mark was a big part of that. Because he hosted a show in the UK called Movie Drum, um, where he would introduce and curate films. And it was the first time I was exposed to a lot of films um, like... Demon Seed, The Warriors, um, and and the big one that always stands out for me generally, the films of Nick Rogue, um, Bad Timing especially, um, and Mark's you know, still uh, a massive proponent of Nick Rogue. I think he picked, was it Bad Timing, in his um, Sight and Sound list 2012. Um, so Mark and I go back that far, and then I used to tape every week a show called Scene to Scene, where Mark would show um, a filmmaker, usually a director, but, but often an actor, um, scenes from their work. Um, Sean Connery was in a great episode, which was in Edinburgh, um, Sean's old stomping ground, and where Mark lives. Um, but the greatest episodes were some of the ones where Mark is completely fearless um, and, and, and thinks, why can I not challenge the director? Why can... Uh, the role of, of of anyone who's observed the film is not be to question the art. So in the Brian De Palma episode, for example, he tells Brian De Palma straight to his face, it doesn't like most, or a good chunk of his films. Um, and that was late 90s, so you can imagine how few he's liked since then, going by Brian De Palma's filmography. Uh, De Palma didn't take that too kindly. Uh, neither did Roman Polanski, uh, when Mark brought up, you know, how do these scenes play in light of not just allegations, but in light of, of what you were arrested for, what you were done for and fled the country for. Um, sometimes they take it in good nature. I mean, Scorsese, when Mark says, um, I think Box Car Bertha is your worst film, um, says, that's fine, I don't like either, you know. But Mark's never saying it to be, to be mean or to get a response, get something juicy for the trailer. He's purely acting as an outlet for his own feelings about film, because I don't think he could be any other way. When you see Mark's introductions to movie drama, and there's a lot of them on YouTube, you see an unbridled passion, a joy, and lots of them he's, he's almost running, he's not just standing still. Alex Cox hosted the show before him, and was a terrific host, a bit before my time, but I went back and caught up. Um, but Mark was the one who, really I grew with and, and grew my cinema journey with. Um, so Mark could get me excited for films that perhaps I didn't even think I would be terribly interested in. I mean, Thunderbolt and Lightfoot, if you read the description on paper, would just sound like another Clint Eastwood, you know, buddy movie. But, you know, I'd be like, well, this has got some kind of homoerotic undertones and it's... It's a, a very unusual film, and Michael Cimino was involved. Oh, right, I'll give this a watch. So, you know, Mark, Mark was... Um, Alex always felt as if he was somewhat... Come on, let's have a laugh at some of these films. If you thought he was a bit above it, Mark never felt that way. Mark always felt as though... Listen, let's watch these films, and I bet there's something we can get out of it. Um, he's never... And I think it's the reason he's become such a great filmmaker, um, is that Mark was never... A, a critic in the sense of my job is here to either say you know or my job is just here to celebrate film um, and and that's exactly what he does so 10 years ago or over now we got the story of film unfortunately Network put this out as an absolute fingerprint magnet look at that um, I have this on DVD Steelbook as well, uh, but Network released it on Blu-ray uh, this year. Uh, well, last year, now I forget. We've, we've had a new year, haven't we? Um, but the original had a kind of black cover. Um, and this is nearly a thousand minutes. Um, 
of the literally the story of film, um, which goes from the Lumiere brothers to Avatar and pretty much everything in between. And unlike most of these kind of projects, it doesn't say, who be for Hollywood? Um, Mark takes you to Mumbai. He takes you to um, China. He takes you to Nigeria, you know, a massive film industry that's so few outside of, of Africa even know about. Um, he had interviews with, with people who've left it since then. Uh, Bertolucci, Stanley Dawn, and um, Claudia Cardinales and, 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 and this one um, and there's a book that Mark wrote um, that this is based on as well um, so first of all this is your starting point this is your bible um, yeah the story of film okay so takes you from again the Lumiere brothers literally so you know train coming into station workers leaving factory all that stuff through Georges Méliès through uh, another guy that Mark idolises, he's got a tattoo, Serge Eisenstein, um, to um, Jim Cameron, you know, right up to, to that kind of era. Um, and, and ends on that kind of avatar note of, is 3D the future? Is that where film is going? I mean, we the answer to that now, don't we? No. Unless Avatar 2, which everybody's with hot talking about, everybody's really excited about. Uh, it's a massive fan. So I was very excited when I found out that Mark was making a sequel. Um, and what it does is it doesn't just make it an extra episode of this. It's a separate film that shows how Mark has progressed as a filmmaker as well. Because this, the story of film, a new generation, doesn't go into things that you think it might. So what are the things that have changed big time in, in films last 10, 12 years? Streaming, number one, I'd say. Um, consumption films. Um, 3D not taking off, um, for example, is another thing. But Mark doesn't concentrate on those kind of things too much. You know, there's, there's lip service paid. But Mark's more interested in the film itself rather than the medium. So there's a reason it's called the story of film and not the story of a, a, a cinema or cinema. Because it's the film, it's what's captured on, on film or celluloids, as it may be, that Mark's interested in. Um, he's not particularly interested in whether it's done like this, just with, you know, I mean, this is a film, essentially. Um, what George Melly is could have done with YouTube, the main on the boggles. Uh, certainly more than I can do with it. Um, although my English is much better, fractionally. Um, but this does also explore and contrast modern films against older films. But never in a snooty way, never in a, wasn't it good back then, uh, isn't modern life rubbish. Um, it takes films, um, so I mean the back quotes, Parasite, Farewell, Black Panther, Lover's Rock, Joker, Frozen. Um, but you can add in there a film that I think Mark says is just, you know, the last word in filmmaking. And he's, he's pretty much right because it's a remarkable achievement. Uh, Hard to be a god, uh, which is out from Arrow Academy. Um, just a stunning, stunning film. Um, which, if you've ever, if you've ever seen it, you'll you'll be sitting going, "Well, yeah." And if you've never seen it, see it. Um, and one of the reviews I saw for this, um, when it was doing the festival circuit, said, um, "I find it a little annoying that it, it shows you snippets and it doesn't go into clips." Mark's not here to say, "Go see Joker; it's a great film." Mark's here to show you an aspect of Joker. That, that's great you know he's here to show you um to contrast a scene from um from a film that cuts every half second for for 10 seconds with that great uh, panning shot from it follows um which you know is, is uncut for you know 30 seconds and how both can be ridiculously scary using completely opposite technique um, Mark also goes into this kind of thing where he's talking about the different mediums with which you can make films. Again, not so much concentrating on the medium itself, but just how it's allowed things to become more expansive. So that um, Tangerine, for example, was able to be made with an iPhone and won all sorts of awards. And there's been a plethora of those kind of films in the last few years. Um, everybody can be Stanley Kubrick these days. Well, nobody can be Stanley Kubrick, but uh, you, you get the gist. That was, you know, a bit of bit of embellishment you know to make the point there <laughs> but 
you know, the back also goes into as the recent pandemic recedes. Um, Cousins ponders what comes next in the streaming age, how we have changed as cinephiles, and how we'll move going continue to transform um, in the digital century to our collective joy and wonder. And that's that's kind of the message of the whole thing. That look, yeah, change. You know, to quote um, who wrote it? I guess Sam Cooke. Change is going to come. <laughs> Although he was writing about civil rights, not movies, but you know. Um, it's nothing to be afraid of. We we move with the times if we embrace them and, and make the technology work for us rather than work against it, then we can achieve wonderful things. And um, that's gone back to this you know, the story of the story of film from the beginning. You know, look at a man with a movie camera. Um, and how radical that must have seemed then, because it still seems radical now. Um, Mark cuts back in this to um, what Wells does in um, Chimes at Midnight. And some of that still seems radical now, even though it's nearly 60 years old and we're getting Shakespeare adaptations now, uh, like the tragedy of Macbeth, aren't as ambitious as that was 60 years ago with Arson Wells. So it's all about the ambition of the filmmaker, regardless of the medium and regardless of the time. Um, and, and Really, it's telling you the story of film is not here's here it is till two thousand nine and here it is until two thousand twenty ish. It's saying it's never ending. Until we stop making them, it's just gonna keep going. And even then you can never see it all. So, you know, <laughs> you're never gonna run out of stuff to enjoy. Um, you're never going to run out of being able to rewatch them and find different ways of, of, of exploring them. And with that in mind, I thought, well, let's have a look at some of Mark's other works. Because I think a lot of people now think of him as that guy that used to be on movie drum or used to be on scene to scene and now has made has made these. Um, that's how a lot of cinephiles view him, even. Whereas he's made some other wonderful films um, in the past. Um, 10, 15 years, so I thought let's have a look at some of those um, briefly. Um, so this is a companion piece um, to the story of film. It's a story of children in film. Um, and this is much shorter, um, but it goes through a lot of kind of world films, I think from, from about two dozen countries. Um, and it, it shows you Mark's own younger family, I think his nephews and nieces or whatnot, um, as they explore their journeys and you know cinema for the first time and how, how they go through it and uh, and shows you how different countries will make children's films so you know it's not it's not an exploration of specifically the children's film itself m as much as it is children viewing film um, and their journeys because if you're anything like me as I've said before on the channel I grew up with um, Burt Lancaster and Kurt Douglas and Jimmy Stewart because my dad wouldn't watch Disney movies um, so I knew all those guys so I wasn't allowed to watch Disney until I was an adult you know um, um, so it's more like that kind of thing you know it's your relationship the child's relationship to the film and really when it comes to film we're all children aren't we when the lights go down when, when a fanfare comes like the 20th Century Fox we're all children again, I think. Um, and then this fascinating one that came out a couple of years ago, Women Make Film, where Mark is indeed the creative force um, on the, the box, but seeds a lot of it um, to uh, Tilda Swinton specifically. Um, but as you can see here, it's narrated by uh, Tilda Swinton, Jane Fonda, Joe Dan Doe, uh, Sharmaloga Tagore, uh, Kerry Fox, uh, Thandie Newton, I think it's now, she's changed the name of her, uh, she's reverted to her original name, I think it's now Thandiewe, I don't know if it's pronounced differently, but it's, it's she was Thandie Newman. I'll say Thandiewe and if someone can correct me please, because I wouldn't like to embarrass myself, um, but I wouldn't like to get her name wrong, because she deserves her own name. Uh, and Deborah Winger, um, good to see her back in the last few years. A new road movie through cinema, and this isn't just Oh, we forgot to put in things about women in this, because believe me, there's plenty in this about the women's side of filmmaking. But as Mark acknowledges in the booklet for this, not enough, because the story of film has never had enough. And at times it has had lots. Like, I think something like the first two or three rating Oscars went to women back in the 20s. Um, 
you know, there, there was, um, and they were, one of them was a, one of them was the original version of The Champ that John Voight later remade, another one was like a, a gangster movie, you know, so they weren't women, women's pictures, you know, they weren't these, you know, a, a melodrama things. Um, they were, they were tough pictures, they just happened to be written by women. But men slowly took over the industry and, and you know, toxic masculinity, we know what happens. And this goes some way to say, yeah, Mark did his best to make the story of film as representative as possible. But in telling the story of film, it also had to be sexist. Because the story of film is sexist. So this uh, redresses the balance somewhat. Um, as much as one can, obviously, you'll always have emissions, but again, it's still 848 minutes. So, I, you know, this one, just under a thousand, and this one 800. So I think, you know, sisters are definitely doing it for themselves. This one, oh, excuse me, I was going to show you the same one twice, so uh, if you want to see it again, you can. This one... The first movie. Uh, the first movie is, oh, this is a stunning achievement. This is where I, I realised just how much um, of of a fan of of the actual filmmaking Mark is and not just the film itself. Um, for those that haven't heard of the first movie, Mark goes to, um, I think it's Iraq, yes it is. He goes to an Iraqi village um, with Kurdistan's believe, um, um, yeah, and it's Ramadan, and they've been through, as you can imagine, um, the the children of um, of that generation who were being, you know, destroyed by Saddam, and then you know had the Americans as well bombing them, so you know clowns to the left and me, jokers to the right, um, but. What Mark did was give them little cameras and asked them to just, you know, he showed them films. He showed because these these kids had never seen films, and he showed them film, short films, some, you know, some Disney films, some um, some kids films from from here, some world films, you know, uh, was the Red Bull in one of them? Um, I know um, the singing ringing tree probably traumatized them a lot more than Saddam Hussein, to be honest. Um, and he then gave them cameras and said, okay, what, what you just saw there, see what you can do. And these kids make their own little movies. And some of them are just the most touching, beautiful little things you'll ever see in your life. Um, and every one of them has meaning because they're from children who have discovered a new world and a new medium. And it's quite remarkable. In fact, to, to be honest, this is one I'd love to see a sequel to and see what happened to the, to the kids. Not that I expect any of them have gone on and come, you know, uh, Oscar winners, <laughs> I'm sure you would have heard, but um, regardless, a uh, wonderful idea, and again shows that Mark's interested in, in the idea of the filmmaker and what the filmmaker sees, the looking, the lens, what the mise scene, to use that awful overused um, film school phrase. But going to a war zone, obviously, Mark, Belfast boy, he grew up during the Troubles. Um, this is his film, I'm Belfast, um, in which it's kind of half half uh, fiction and, and, and half, I guess, non-fiction, but it's, it's um, got a great soundtrack by David Holmes, who did 71 in Hunger, so he's done a lot of these kind of Northern Irish uh, projects. Um, and it, it goes on a journey through the, the history of the, the capital, um, of Belfast, uh, but it doesn't just go through the troubles, you know, it goes through, it goes through the, the, the countryside around Belfast, which is beautiful and it's seen far too much blood soaking, you know, the wonderful country that it is. Um, and, you know, Mark lives here in Scotland now, um, and I've had the pleasure of seeing him at a good few film festivals, and, and um, yeah, it's just, I'm glad he got to go back and reconnect with, with a more modern Belfast and, and, and make some kind of reparation with the Belfast he, he left behind, which hopefully he found cathartic, if nothing else. One of the unusual ones um, is Stockholm, my love, starring Nena Cherry, uh, formerly of the pop charts, um, sister of Eagle Eye Cherry, of course, uh, everybody's 
uh, second favourite cherry, well, Max Cherry from uh, Jackie Brown, I suppose. But um, this is um, another interesting one. Uh, Nena Cherry mostly goes through the film silently, but we hear her inner thoughts. She's been through grief and trauma. Um, she's an architect um, and she, she, she's haunted. Um, but it's really all about this stunning, stunning cinematography. Mark Fiennes, or whoever, I don't want to just give praise to Mark. Um, Chris Doyle, I think, was the, the cinematographer. They find these great locations. So every shot just looks like a paint in a modern piece of art. You know, they find a majestic staircase for Nina to come down. You know, it's absolutely breathtaking. And and it's, it's almost a testament to, to the everyday that we walk past. Um, in our grief and in our depression, and we miss the the beautiful around us. We miss the we miss the the world um, because it's Stockholm, my love. Just it's, it's Glasgow, my love. But I could I could walk down by his road, miserable, and, and maybe not appreciate. You know, I've still I've still got the world. Um, yeah, yeah. Chris Doyle did uh, the cinematography. Who did the cinematography for uh, One Car Wise and The Mood for Love? So, I think we're in pretty safe hands with a look at it of this film. Um, yeah, brilliant. BFI, Mark Cousins. What what can go wrong? Uh, just a couple more. Yeah, just a couple more. Uh, I mean, this tribute um, to Monsieur Cousins. Um, yeah, we'll do this one next because it's also involving one of my favourite bands. Scotland's own Mogwai. This is Atomic. And. Ooh, you see, now you can kind of get the gist of what this is about. You won't mistake it from the title Living in Dread and Promise. Um, this is essentially the history of the Atomic Age told through montage. Um, so, again, going back to uh, Eisenstein uses techniques of editing and, and, and whatnot to. Um, to juxtapose, to contradict, um, to elaborate, um, to terrify, to ensure, you know, depending on what Mark uh, wants you to, to feel in the moment. So we, we go from literally uh, way back in the, the 1940s with the Oppenheimer stuff and the Manhattan Project um, through the, um, you know, the... Um, Chernobyl, and we go through the, the atomic age itself, dark and cover, and, but it's all done silently apart from the soundtrack by Mogwai. So in that regard, it's a bit like that film Zidane, or just uh, filmed Zinedine Zidane during a, a Real Madrid uh, game, but it's not derivative in any way, shape or form of that. It's, it's, it's a statement in its own right. In fact, the highest praise I can give this is what this reminds me of most is Twin Peaks episode eight from from Twin Peaks: The Return, the the wonderful um, episode where uh, you know got a light, um, yeah, stunning. Not for everyone. I'm I'm not going to pretend that your granny's going to sit down and watch this with you, but yeah. And then finally, and I have said this intentionally for last because a hero of both of ours, um, although Mark has more, I guess more of a right to call him a hero being being Mark Cousins. But the eyes of Orson Welles on David A. Um, as I mentioned, he uses Welles, of course, in the story of film. He goes back to revisit Welles in um, A New Generation. And this is his film on Welles. But if it ends a new way to go through Welles, you'd think, come on, it's Orson Welles. What, what more to be said? Well, Mark gets the chance to go to the visual world of, of Wells um, through paintings, through sketches and drawings that he did um, with um, Orson Welles' daughter, I believe it is. Um, hundreds and hundreds of drawings. Um, and again, with Mark being so interested in the visual and what the filmmaker imagines and sees, to him that's just as important as seeing, well, you know, I guess, let's say the the missing end of the magnificent Ambersons that the, the hunt goes on for or um you know the Don Quixote that was never done or the Moby Dick that was never done. This is the next best thing um, to see these Orson Wells um, illustrations. Um explores how the genius of Wells still resonates today in the age of Trump. <laughs> Get it? That's it, stick it to them. <laughs> um yeah. Oh. It's one thing about Mark, he always does wear his heart on his sleeve as well. Um, 
Yeah, fantastic. Um, and the extras in this, um, even though it's a DVD and not a Blu-ray, are fantastic. There's a big Q and A, and then there's a, a, a documentary which is nothing but Mark bidding on eBay for a pair of Orson Welles boots. Um, fantastic. Um, so this is my um, <laughs> Mark Cousins collection um, thus far and I hope it expands further still because um, I absolutely adore Mark as a as a film lover. I love his work. Um, I love him as a commentator of film, um, as someone who introduced me to, through, to my own journey of film. Um, and, and, and just as as, um, as as someone who appreciates um, film, you know, which which sounds really obvious, but I think people don't as much as they used to. They don't think about, you know, I think the best and worst thing that Ebert and Siskel ever did was that whole, you know, or, or the four stars thing and all that nonsense. Um, because to me, there can be a one star film that's got 10 seconds in it that are worth everything. Um, and likewise, there can be a five star film which where you just think, what the hell was that? That was rubbish. You know? um, so, you know, I think the star system or the thumbs up, thumbs down is flawed. Um, and take, taking that into account and being able to just look at, at moments, um, looking, you know, the frame. Um, because that's whole cinema is, isn't it? It's, it, it's it's frames per second. It's it's just one shot at a time, shown fast enough for our eyes um, to believe that it's, that it's moving. Um, but yeah. Anyway, that's kind of, I'm starting to get into kind of pretentious ramblings now. Um, and one thing I'd also like to say is Mark's narration on my um, new generation is as wonderful as ever. Um, he, he has the, I think he's got the most soothing voice ever. He, he should be reading audiobooks. Um, he's got this great Northern Irish accent as it stands, and it's so gentle and calming and reassuring. Um, I think um, the first episode of the story of film starts with Saving Private Ryan, if I remember right, from all those years back. Um, um, and he's pointing out how, you know, it's the beaches of Normandy, you know, that famous landing scene, but it's filmed in Northern Ireland, you know, in modern day. Um, and Mark says, a lie, a lie to tell the truth. <laughs> you know, it just, it's, it's brilliant. It's, it slows his cadence down, which is something, he is very excitable in real life, um, but in his narration, he's very, he's very meticulous. Chooses his, his moments. Um, when he's uh, narrating over, um, um, I think it was an Ozu film or a Mizuguchi film, you know, he'll say, a kettle, a cat, the door opens, the man comes in, you know, it's it's um, it's brilliant, but, that, but it doesn't just describe what's happened in the film, it's to emphasise, here's what your eyes should be drawn to in this scene, here's what to focus on, because this is what you should be taking away from from this. Or, if you've got something better to add, then take that away as well. Because Mark isn't your film professor. He's given you a story of film, but invites you to make your story of film. Um, which, what more can you ask? He's a liberator of film, that's, that's what I consider him. A historian, a filmmaker, a critic, a genius. Um, so Mark, thank you for all your work over the past Oh, how long have I been watching? 25-ish years on, on uh, various mediums from from uh, movie drone through scene to scene, story of film and all these films and your books. Um, thank you most sincerely. And I'm going to give a shout out at the end here to Mr. Nathan Jones who requested a video on Mark Cousins not terribly long ago. Um, and I said I'd be more than happy to oblige um, because Mark is one of my absolute filmmaking heroes and not just of films about film, but just in general. Um, I think that the, the story of film holds up to anything made in the last 20 years documentary-wise. In fact, take out the documentary part, the story of film, I think, is one of the best films of the, last, of the 21st century, just in general. A bold claim, but uh, I'm making it. Fight me. Fight me. Yeah, you're going to fight me with my 
Lamwise is down in Broadway t-shirt didn't think so anyway um, so listen thank you very much for watching uh, hope you got something out of that not just a ramble hope you you check out some of Mark's other works if you only know the story of film I've been Davy uh, thanks again for your attention should you have any questions or comments feel free to pop them in the uh, comment section is probably the best place for them otherwise I won't see them um, and um, yeah I'll be back soon with another video of some sort won't be as good as this because it's not going to be about Mark Cousins unless he does another film tomorrow please that be nice Mark just release something but uh, ladies and gentlemen thank you once more and remember let's stay very safe out there love and mercy my dears love and mercy